Hello and welcome to this Church of St Stephen's in Lansdowne, Bath, part of the benefits of St Stephen's with St Mary's Chalcombe. You are very welcome. My name is Philip Hawthorne. I'm the rector here and we gather for worship and our focus today, our intention is to pray for Ukraine especially, for its people and for the Russian soldiers in that land and also for Russia. Wherever you're watching this service and whenever you're watching, you are welcome. God draws us together by the Holy Spirit to be together. So as we gather, let's spend a moment of quiet and I'll pray for us. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ. May we be aware of your presence within us and between us. All of us who are watching this service, we pray you draw us together as a body of your people, that you deepen our love for you, and that you increase our vision of what your kingdom means in the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our reading this morning is all about Jesus coming up against power. And the reading is in Luke chapter 13. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city that kills prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've been spending some time this week in black and white. I was thinking about the 1976 public information film where a man walks into the road and is hit by a car and the film cuts to an image of a peach being smashed by a hammer. It was a very successful campaign about road safety. And I was thinking about this on Thursday when I, like many of us, saw that horrific picture of the pregnant injured woman being wheeled on a hospital trolley through the remains of the hospital at Mariupol. Yet another image that we don't know what to do with. We look and we look away. And at times it can seem that it's beyond even prayer. Our comfort here is far away from those shattered and shrapnel spattered walls that we see on the news. The passage we've heard from Luke's Gospel is interesting. It pits Jesus up against the full force of the Romans, the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Rome, two completely different, as much as soft flesh and hard metal. Herod, who is mentioned in the piece, is Herod Antipas, 
and he's the son of Herod the Great. You remember from the visit of the Magi when they were searching for the Christ child and for the slaughter of the innocents. But Antipas has none of the power of his father. The Romans have made him a tetrarch, having only a quarter of the territory. And they deny him the title which his father had, that of king. He is publicly and embarrassingly subordinate, ruling by favour and not by right. And Jesus has no time at all for Herod Antipas, that fox. He never goes to any of the cities that Herod has made because he sees them as the antithesis to the kingdom of God he has come to establish. Herod wants to Romanize the Jews, to bring them under the aegis of Rome, whose values are the opposite of the gospel. A bully ruler trying to dominate another people. I wonder where we can see that in our present time. It would be very easy now to point out the parallels between a stone-hearted ruler then and a current one we might think of. Easy to point out the cruelty, the violence and the inhumanity that we've seen every day for the last 16 or 17 days. The burned shells of civilian areas, the attacks on promised safe corridors for refugees, the devastated hospitals and schools and public buildings, the cheating of the Russian soldiers pretending to surrender, then opening fire as Ukrainians approach to take them prisoner, the jaw-dropping lies out of Moscow, saying there are no Russian attacks on civilians. Rather, it's the Ukrainians shelling their own people. It would be easy to say all that, but that would be to miss the point of what the kingdom of God is all about, of what Lent is all about. At the heart of Lent is reconciliation. As we seek to be reconciled to God, it gives us the strength and the faith to seek that in our lives and for the world. In contrast, the heart of stone seeks separation, fears differences, marginalises, demonises, hangs on to injustices they perceive from the past, wants to dominate and to control. And that's how Herod feels about Jesus. The heart of reconciliation, as God intends, starts by looking within, then looks out in humility and hope. This is the Spirit's work of empathy. Paranoia and hatred are Herod's weapons. Prayer and love, the weapons of the kingdom. In praying for Ukraine, how do we approach this sometimes seemingly impossible task? Lucy Winkett, talking on Thought for the Day on International Women's Day this week, reminds us of women in Ukraine and also those in conflicts in Myanmar, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Central African Republic and on and on who have suffered the horror of war as civilians. And she said this, Christian spiritual practice has a way of demanding that I pay attention to this suffering by encouraging deep connection to it. And she cites a Russian Orthodox monk. Part of Christian commitment 
is to keep your mind in hell, but to despair not. Both of these halves are important, she says. Don't look away. Go to that hell in your imagination. And at the same time, do not despair. So alongside practically donating and supporting, I commit to this, to imagine, to pray, to insist that those in Ukraine each remains a mysterious and precious soul, not a statistic whose distress I have witnessed. And that I will remain forever stricken, complicit in the knowledge that this cruelty is part of our shared humanity. And to say that I am you, you are me. There is no them, there is only us. This is a deep work. This is a hard work. Not in any way an easy option. Not weak, nor soft. This is a work that rather than finding strength in demonizing the other, begins with the self and finds strength in the recognition of our own vulnerability, our own weakness. We pray not just for peace, not just for victory over tyranny, but first we pray, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on us. Luke tells us throughout his gospel that us is what Jesus comes to bring. He tells of a peasant girl bearing the seed of Christ and worshipping and magnifying with all her soul. Detested shepherds being the first to see the newborn baby. A prodigal and insulting son returning to full forgiveness. A hated Samaritan showing the generosity of the kingdom of God. A crucified thief finding he will be in paradise. He speaks that he comes to bring good news to the poor, sight for the blind, release for the oppressed. And today he speaks of being a mother hen, gathering her brood under her wings. Bishop Michael Curry says, as the good news of Jesus is declared and the Holy Spirit of God is poured forth, a new human community emerges from the great variety and diversity of humanity. In other words, the us together in Christ, not them, us. To imagine peace in Ukraine at the moment is hard because there is so much hard power working against it. But if we give up on prayer because of that, then the kingdom of Herod wins. The power of Herod would have killed Jesus. But indeed, that's exactly what happens. And in this world, that would be a victory. But is this a victory for Rome? Only if our story stops at Good Friday. Prayer starts here, in my heart and in yours, with the mystery that the opening of my heart, the seeking of forgiveness, the seeking of mercy, is the doorway to the kingdom of God. The enemy kingdom may want to smash us like a peach. But inside the peach is a stone. And that is the source of life 
continuing and of the fullness. In the end, a peach will die anyway, a new life will emerge, as it does at Easter, when another stone is rolled away. To seek a heart for God's kingdom is to choose not to put our energy into hatred or fear or despair, but rather in our weakness, in our not knowing what to do, to start with the simplest of prayers, the Jesus prayer. It's part of a short prayer cycle that I say every day at 12 noon. It's familiar in the West. We use the essence of it in our prayers for Ukraine, but it has its roots in Eastern Orthodox spirituality. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Silence is God's first language. In our prayer today, we're going to start by naming those that we're praying for and holding them before God. And then we're going to have 10 minutes of quiet where we can hold Ukraine and Russia in the silence of God. Your mind will wonder, it happens. But don't despair for that. When you're aware of that, just bring your mind back. Maybe you'd just like to have in your mind those words, Lord, have mercy. Just that, and allow that to be your focus. We're not seeking a result, we're not seeking necessarily a wonderful calm to come over us, but to trust that our prayer is enough. It's a start. It puts into the world the kingdom of God. So let's pray together. As we pray for the wider world, we pray for a healing for our planet from what's leading it to climate change. We pray for our Lent courses and what we will learn about our stewardship of your creation. And we pray for those on our minds and heart in our benefits this, this week for Margaret Knowles, for Tony, for Peter Culverwell, for Bill and Sally and Muriel, for Caroline, for Simon, for Diane, for Lorna and Emma and Eowyn. And some space now for you to hold those on your mind and heart at the moment. We pray for those who have died recently, especially we pray for Hilary Buchan from St Stephen's who died this week. And we pray for Malcolm and all the family. Pray for Alison Bagley, whose funeral was on Friday last. And her family, Ellie, 
Peter, Jane and others. And we remember those who've died recently, John Harrison, Bob Dre, Edward May and Gay Byers. So now we come to our silence for Ukraine and for Russia and for peace. And we ask mercy for those wars that we've not prayed over as much in Chechnya, Iraq, Myanmar, Myanmar, Yemen and Syria. I'm going to say the prayers that we've been praying in our churches and for the bidding when I say Kyrie eleison, please respond, Lord have mercy. God of all nations, we cry to you for the people of Ukraine. We thank you for their roots, identity and courage in the face of such aggression. We pray for peace to be quickly restored in the land of Ukraine, for war not to extend beyond its borders, and for peace of Western countries to remain. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, we pray for President Volodymyr Zelensky and President Vladimir Putin and their governments. Thwart evil power, direct hearts to be peaceable and full of mercy. Give wisdom to other governments to know how to help Ukraine and its people and avoid escalation. And bless, we pray, the peacemakers. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, we pray for the church in Ukraine. Give our sisters and brothers strength and resilience in this crisis to proclaim the good news of our kingdom, bind up broken hearts, and bring comfort to all who mourn. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, you make wars cease to the ends of the earth. You break bows, shatter spears and burn shields with fire. You are our rock, our fortress and our deliverer. Our hope is in you. We pray you save the lives of Ukrainians and Russians. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. So let's spend our time together now in quiet prayer.
sorry our time's been cut short but do spend the rest of the time as the service finishes don't forget our Lent course starts this week so do look on our website for details of that and in the fortnight we have Mothering Sunday here at St Stephen's and also at St Mary's with a big um, all-age service here uh, please uh, encourage others to come to that as well as yourselves and we have our Easter services being announced this week as well and the one to note particularly is on Maundy Thursday our Cook for Ukraine Agape Supper uh, that needs to be booked in advance so please look out for the details of that now go in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ in the name of god our creator and the name of our abiding spirit bless you